The aim of this lecture is to present some further regulatory instruments that can correct market failures in the energy markets. With this lecture, you will be able to understand why some of these policies create stronger incentives for investments and how regulators should encourage not only efficiency, but also long-term output targets like service quality, security of supply and innovation. In the previous lecture, you have studied two classic price instruments, the rate of return method and the price caps. The former reimburses firms for their incurred cost and thus create limited incentive to increase efficiency. The latter foster efficiency because firms retain profits above the X factor, but stifles long-term investments in infrastructure, as it does not compensate firms for long-term risky projects. Next, you will examine YASI competition as another possible pricing instruments. Moreover, you will learn about other regulatory schemes and incentive mechanisms that are used to target a number of outcomes other than prices. In absence of competition, economic regulation might step in to correct distortions and induce undertakings to adopt behaviors in line with a competitive approach, even in those markets where no condition for the development of competition are actually in place. These goals can be pursued through YASI competition or the so-called regulatory benchmarking. YASI competition of benchmarking is applied in the case of regulated industries characterized by a number of local monopolies such as electricity and gas distribution, water and sewerage industries. YASI competition is achieved by comparing the performance of regulated firms operating in the same industry with the ultimate aim of improving the productive efficiency of all firms operating in the market. By applying this method, regulators identify a tariff based on the estimated efficient cost of all firms operating in an industry. These efficient costs are determined by a quantitative analysis of the cost of all firms operating in the same industries, which are not only are likely to use the same production technology, but also provide similar services to those of other firms operating in the same industry. More specifically, the intuition behind this method is straightforward. The regulator compares data across the industries and then uses information from others to regulate the single firm. For example, the price of a firm can be set as the average costs observed in all other firms, according to the following formula. The price of a single firm, PI, should equal its average estimated cost, CI bar, and the regulator defines CI bar as equivalent to the average costs of all other firms in that industry, other than firm I. This method allows policymakers to compare regulated firms, so to define an industrial best practice, and thus benchmark regulation against it. The key advantage of YASI competition is that it reduces information asymmetries between the regulator and the regulated companies by defining feasible range of cost reductions in the regulated industry. This, in turn, can reduce information rents enjoyed by the single companies. However, this method suffers from a number of shortcomings. First of all, whenever firms are quite different, the heterogeneity in prices and costs makes it harder to define a relevant benchmark. Secondly, this policy creates a potential risk of collusion among regulated firms, as they could be willing to declare costs higher than the ones actually incurred. Lastly, it does not provide the regulator with a credible enforcement strategy. Beyond these regulatory instruments that target prices charged by energy firms, other incentive schemes exist that complement the previous ones. For example, to increase efficiency, policymakers can instead focus on earning sharing or revenue sharing plans. They both allow for explicit sharing of realized earnings or revenues between the regulated firm and its customers. The main advantages of focusing on other parameters rather than prices are that they provide stronger incentives for cost minimization, as they do not emphasize the link between prices and the costs. Moreover, they do not suffer from input biases, as they measure also some outputs to judge the effectiveness of a policy. Lastly, 
These alternative incentive methods are less burdensome in terms of administrative costs. However, prices may diverge significantly from realized costs, as the price-cost link is severed. Also, all risk shifts to the regulated firm, thus making the cost of capital to finance investments much higher. Lastly, these incentive schemes can still create some distorted incentives. As they encourage cost reduction, they can also create strong incentives to reduce quality and postponing innovations. For this reason, these policies need to be coupled with some forms of service quality regulation. In recent years, after a long period of implementation of efficiency-oriented mechanism, regulation is now more focused on new incentive schemes stimulating performance more broadly. While price controls and efficiency incentives were targeting mostly inputs, such as operational and capital expenditures, nowadays attention has shifted towards improving social welfare more broadly, looking at a variety of output measures. These include network reliability, environmental impacts, customer satisfaction, ability to meet social obligations, long-term investments and innovation, and so on. To conclude, you have now seen some of the main types of regulatory instruments available to policymakers. In practice, most countries design hybrid policies that include some cost-sharing components and some incentive-based components. Another fundamental element that ensures effective regulation is the presence of independent regulatory agencies that can monitor and enforce efficiency, service quality and infrastructure investment. Thank you.